Next painting. This time it's Yoshitaka Kitao from SBI. Um, so this will be the first portrait on my channel and uh, I start like uh, most of the pictures. I um, do like pencil and paper and I have my reference as a photo and I'll I try to get the rough as uh, proportions right directly in the beginning I was trying to get the shape of the head um, yeah you should take care about like the distance between the eyes size of the nose I already know that before I was doing the nose too small uh, so this time I was directly making the nose a little bit bigger and I'm always trying to compare to the reference so by overlaying it uh, digitally um, and this time I only needed two iterations to get the proportions straight so these are my first tries um, coloring the face and as you can see like I am really trying out with different values um, I already had the aim that he was inside of a, like a yellow room the background should be yellow so see some yellowish reflection on the right side of his cheek and I'm, I'm trying around here and I really don't like the result and when I colored the lips so pink then I finally panicked <laughs> and I tried to find a different way so First of all, what I was doing was, um, based on the pencil drawing, I just uh, followed all those contours with uh, like a regular uh, brush uh, with a dark gray color. Because then I have like one layer which is only uh, the, the shape of everything and I can color everything but the, the contours will be still visible as you see right now. I can just paint gray wherever I like the contours are in the foreground and the technique I'm using here um, is now different uh, to the coloring I did in the beginning of the video because um, when you do already the coloring with the beginning you have to pay attention on uh, two things on uh, the value of the brightness and which color it actually uh, is there so by uh, you can split that up in two processes by uh, first you make like a grayscale picture and only make everything in gray tones and then later you can uh, by a specific method you can um, you can uh, add the color it also has uh, a disadvantage uh, but I will tell you later right now uh, I am um, based on all those contours I already had I am putting in more details I try to make the shading um, I already made the the eyes quite detailed as you saw like a couple of seconds ago I was moving the the, the, um, the, the retina uh, of um, the person slightly uh, to the right because I had the impression that the person isn't looking to the camera and just looking beside it um, so I was finished with the uh, eye area now I am taking care of the lips and uh, the structure of the lips have like the, they have like horizontal lines uh, and you can resemble the structure by also painting always horizontally uh, adding some highlights here um, just pay attention like there is a really specific shape of uh, the upper lip here uh, adding some highlights and you can slightly see the teeth um, detailing more on uh, the, the wrinkles uh, of the person then uh, the nostrils they are pretty dark and um, by, by step by step following through this process you can really see how the the face the three-dimensionality of the face pops out so right now taking care of the right eye it is always like you first I filled everything with a medium gray scale then I made like the 
slightly brighter parts, then I made the slightly darker parts, and then uh, finishing up with, with highlights. This is uh, a process. Oh, yeah, and then the, the really black color, once the, the highlights are there, you can close to the highlights, make the, depending on the form of course, but here you, you see it close to the highlights, you also have like the very dark color. Just, um, I'm painting so long as it, I really get the feeling that this gives us a sense of three-dimensionality. Um, then I am laying the base color of the hair, which is almost black, it's just a really, really dark gray. And here um, I observed in which way the hair is falling. And um, yeah, it's, it's not easy to make like a really homogeneous curve of every single hair. Sometimes because the curve was too long, I had to split the curve in, in two parts, but still uh, it really looks like the, the, the haircut Yoshitaka Kitao on the reference picture actually has. Uh, after I was adding the hair by hair, I was uh, adding more highlights, some some white or bright gray hair, uh, and uh, darkening also some some areas down to uh, give the the whole hair more structure. Same thing with the uh, with the eyebrows. Okay, in this step, I already get into the really nitty gritty uh, details with the wrinkles and um, often it was like where the wrinkle when you look at his forehead uh, or the the eye bags uh, where the, the wrinkles are you also uh, have to add some highlights and you you really make it three-dimensional and here is now the technique that you first lay out uh, really uh, like a base color which was yellow and then uh, you can add another layer which uh, takes up the the color from underneath I did that because of the uh, grayscale picture but since the yellow color was also underneath it was getting like this yellowish tone where I was in the beginning quite freaked out but uh, I added some more colors more realistic reddish face colors and uh, you can see like that the the face color of the portrait uh, gets way more becomes way more healthy um, yeah I really felt a little bit like in those Bob Ross videos where he's painting out this very beautiful picture and then he's just adding like a huge splash of a different color color and you think oh no you ruined it and then uh, he, he makes something really special about it and then you understand ah, that's the concept behind it so I a little bit felt like that so now I am doing the suit base color of the suit uh, which was like the darker parts and then I just needed to, to brighten things up uh, the color of the suit uh, only needed a really few details um, to, to make it already look very plastic three-dimensional um, now I'm doing the right side of it uh, as you can see like the left side of the color is not the same like on the right side so I had to change a little bit where it is to make it look symmetrical um, then the light is kind of coming from the front so on his back side it is a little bit darker than on the front side so that's why you see this this edge uh, on his shoulder um, adding some more details of course the fabric of the suit is kind of wrinkling a little bit there you see more wrinkles first the slider bright color later I will add some darker shapes this is where the arm is the shoulder part also Adding some darker shadows there you see and this is where the button if there would be a button I think nobody uses this for a button so now I'm doing the shirt the shirt is white and has like blue stripes and first I was doing stripe by stripe but it wasn't going rectangular from the corner now it's going rectangular from the corner of the collar 
that's uh, why like in for more uh, 3d effects I was darkening the edges a little bit down uh, same thing on the other hand but here you cannot go straight I made to had to make curves of the stripes because the, the fabric is kind of bending and you can really use the path tool for it this is quite helpful and now I am going to uh, the tie which had a really interesting pattern on the tie maybe I don't know maybe it's birds doves um, yeah I had to follow through uh, the, the whole pattern and there is a tool uh, which only I only know the, the German name of it it's uh, Abwedler uh, where you can darken the edges and give it a really nice look that everything seems three dimensional and this is basically it and this is the reference of Yoshitaka Kitano.